Hi, welcome to this video series. This is Tommy Hodgins, and in this video series, I'm going to try to demystify some concepts about HTML syntax and parsing, and I'll help give you the tools that you need to verify and validate your own questions about HTML just by having a conversation with a web browser. Now, in this first video, I'm going to answer the question, what is the difference between the HTML language, HTML syntax, XML syntax, and DOM? And the answer is one that's not very well understood, even by people who have been working with HTML for years. I'll do my best to try to explain it, so hang on till the end, because we're going to be using a lot of terms without a lot of distinction, seemingly at first. So on my browser right now, I have the HTML standard, the living standard open. This is the document that defines all HTML. It was last updated very recently. It gets multiple updates every week. And so every time you open this document, it is fresh and current. This is what browsers use. This is what people use. So when I talk about HTML, it is specifically this document that describes it. So what is HTML? HTML is a language. Here's how it fits into the rest of the web. So CSS, SVG, MathML, Service Worker sit on top of it. It works alongside some of these other technologies, and it builds on a lot of these other technologies. And it's kind of the kitchen sink that glues everything together. So we're talking about a language that is doing something. So I'm going to read this section, and I'm going to add my own commentary to it. And hopefully, by the time we get to the end of this section, we'll all be on the same page. So this section is called HTML versus XML syntax. Now I'm going to use the word XML language to refer to the stuff that is in the XML spec, not in this. I'm going to refer to HTML language as everything in this spec. And what we have learned just from this heading is that we also have two other concepts in the HTML spec in HTML language called XML syntax and HTML syntax. So with that, let's move forward. This specification defines an abstract language, that's HTML, for describing documents and applications and some APIs for interacting with in-memory representations of resources that use this language. The in-memory representation is known as DOM HTML, or the DOM for short. This is the document object model. So that is the hierarchical tree of all of the nodes and elements that make up the document. There is a DOM spec because the idea of a document object model and how you can interact with that are not specific just to HTML alone. So there are other languages other than HTML that can be parsed into some kind of a DOM. Moving on. There are various concrete syntaxes that can be used to transmit resources that use this abstract language, the HTML language, and two of these syntaxes are defined in this specification. So we've learned that there's HTML, the language, the in-memory representation of it, how the computer thinks about it is called DOM, but how humans work with it, there are two ways that it can be written. The first such concrete syntax is called the HTML syntax. This is the format suggested for most authors, that's us, and compatible with most legacy web browsers. If a document is transmitted with the text HTML MIME type, it will be processed as an HTML document by web browsers. This specification here defines the latest HTML syntax known simply as HTML. Now I feel they could have used slightly better names for this because here we've got HTML, the language, defining HTML, the syntax. The second concrete syntax is XML. When a document is transmitted with an XML MIME type, then it is treated as an XML document by web browsers to be parsed by an XML processor. Authors are reminded that the processing for XML syntax and HTML syntax differs. In particular, even minor syntax errors will prevent the document 
in XML syntax from being rendered fully, whereas HTML syntax is a lot more forgiving. Now, if you're wondering what the difference is here, we'll get to that. One thing to note here before we dive into HTML versus XML is that the XML syntax for HTML was formerly referred to as XHTML, and you'll still hear that term a lot. This HTML specification does not use the term XHTML. Now, if you have not heard of XHTML before, or if you think that you are still writing XHTML, this is definitely for you, this next section. I've loaded up an old XHTML 1.0 spec from the W3C. You can see that this became a recommendation two decades ago in the year 2000. It's been revised since, and let's see how it describes itself. This specification defines XHTML1, a reformulation of HTML4 as an XML1 application. So the first things that we notice about this spec are that it is outdated, it says it's been superseded, it's two decades old, and the goal of it was to describe an obsolete outdated version of HTML in an outdated version of XML. Now, it does say here that the goal was to express HTML language in XML syntax, but it's not exactly the same HTML that we're working with today. In any case, this has been superseded. This is not current. There may be people out there using it, but it is generally not what people are working with. If we look for an XHTML2 spec, we find this working group note from one decade ago. Now here, it doesn't even have the pretense of describing HTML. It says XHTML2 is a general purpose markup language designed to represent documents for a range of purposes across the World Wide Web. So even though when we scroll down, we see familiar things like an HTML element and a head element and a title element and things that look like they overlap with HTML, we also see things like the L element and DI element. And so this, although it largely overlaps with HTML, is just a language like HTML that's being designed to be what it is with its whatever syntax it has. And this was never a recommendation. You'll see under the status of this document that it's not endorsed. The working group's charter expired before it could complete work on it. Maybe somebody will pick it up in the future. It's been a decade, nobody's picked it up. So when we talk about XML syntax for HTML, HTML syntax for HTML or working with HTML, we are not talking about XHTML. Whatever that was a decade or two ago, it's a complete dead end. And just to underline this, it is not actually the W3C that creates HTML today. If you go to w3.org slash HTML, it says that html.spec.whatwg.org slash multipage, that is this living standard that we looked at earlier, is the current HTML standard. It obsoletes all other previously published HTML specifications. And then they use a couple paragraphs to basically explain that the W3C does not create HTML, that is what WG, and nothing that they've written is official anymore on this particular topic. So we do not listen to the W3C on matters of HTML. We do not read old outdated specs from decades ago. We read the spec that was updated yesterday. So what have we learned so far? We have learned there's an HTML language, two syntaxes. So what are these syntaxes? So the first syntax is the HTML syntax. Now, if we look in this living standard, there's a good section of it that is dedicated just to parsing HTML syntax. So here in section 12, 
This is the HTML syntax. It explains how you write them, what a doc type is, it explains what elements are, and all these concepts about tags opening and closing. It explains what attributes are, how they work. It explains all of these different concepts and ideas that are present, uh, what tags you can omit, how things work, restrictions of content models. All of these are defined in the spec. You'll also notice that the HTML spec includes about 140 different built-in elements. So these are the elements of HTML that you're familiar with, the iframe element, um, the BR element, the uh, A element, things like that, the P element. These are all defined in the HTML spec. If we look at the XML spec, we see there's information about how to write a document, there's sections about start tags, end tags, and how to parse these things, but there's no definition of any built-in elements. XML is a blank slate, it's a syntax. As long as everything is explicitly written, it can be parsed, and it doesn't necessarily have an idea or an understanding of what kind of document it is or what it expects to be there. And so the XML spec defining the XML language is very open-ended. And so this syntax, XML syntax, is used for HTML, it's used for MathML, and tons of other data formats and document formats, um, each with their own definition. So the SVG spec, which uses XML as its syntax, doesn't need to define what XML is. It can just say, when you write SVG, use the XML syntax. So in here, that's what it does when it describes how to use the XML syntax with HTML language. The section on parsing HTML syntax is huge, but the section on describing the HTML language in XML is just four headings long, and it basically says, here's the doc type, here's how you say this XML happens to be HTML language. And it doesn't really need to define anything beyond that because you can go to the XML language spec to learn how to write XML language. So with all of that said, what does it actually mean? So I'm going to open inspect element on this page and in my browser, you will see the DOM. This is the document object model for this document that's loaded in my web browser right now. I can interact with it, I could delete the head tag, I can bring it back, um, I can rearrange things. This is in memory as the computer's thinking about it. If I were to view source for this page, I would see the original HTML syntax. Now, even though this representation of the page in HTML syntax is not exactly the same as this representation of the page in DOM, they do describe the same document in HTML language. The same elements are present in both. It's just not the exact same. So there is no XML representation of this page, but we could create one. So to create an XML representation of DOM, you need an XML serializer. Thankfully, there's one built right into the browser. So we can say new XML serializer, serialize to string, document. And this will give us back an XML syntax representation. Here you can see it's added the XML namespace to that document element. Um, so this is the XML syntax version of this DOM, which was originally parsed from this HTML syntax. So the XML syntax and the HTML syntax are not the same. If we were to go in here and say, is this equal to the document elements own HTML representation of itself and its content, the answer is false. So HTML syntax and XML syntax for the same DOM may not be the same. Hopefully that illustrates it a little bit. If we had parsed this XML, we would have gotten the exact same DOM 
and the exact same HTML language out of it. So that's kind of how you can think about HTML language in two different syntaxes and one in memory representation. Hopefully this made sense. Uh, in the next video, we'll get into can HTML elements be self-closing? Um, we'll look at ways to parse and verify HTML and XML and work with them. And beyond that, perhaps we'll make a video about how to create an HTML tagged template function that can really assist your productivity. Anyway, for now, that's this video. Uh, subscribe if you want to check out the new videos coming and hope you have a great day.